something algebraic refactoring. So it's all the trig part of it is going to be the same. It's just you have to remember how to how to do this part. And then once you get you know once you get all the algebraic part done, you can go into finding the angles and stuff using trig. The the key is to look at this as a variable just all by itself here, right? Cos x. So think of this as the same as if if you're not sure what to do when you look at a trig equation. Think about what would you do if it just said 2m squared plus 3m plus 1. Like what would you do if it looked like that? Any of the equations that you come across, that's what you think about. If you're not sure what to do here, it's exactly what you would do here if you're trying to solve it algebraically. What would you do there? What could you do? You could factor it. Probably lots of the equations I give you are things that you can factor. If not, what could you do? Quadratic formula, right? Good, uh, good reading up here. <laughs> Looking at the title, you just knew it. Oh, I wasn't saying you didn't just know it. Um, I'm going to try factoring it. Realize that it's not just x in here; it's cos x. You're probably in such a habit of just instantly writing two x that you forget what you're doing. You're factoring where each of these is cos x, not x. The fact that this last thing's plus one, here's our only option for factoring and see if that works, right? It is possible that it doesn't factor, but that, that's going to work if you check the middle term. It works. Once you do that, remember what the concept of factoring is. The concept is either this bracket is zero or this bracket is zero. Either one of those is zero. Each one is going to give you some answers possibly. So we got this thing we're going to deal with over here, and then this one we're going to deal with right here. If, if this first one is 0, 2 cos x plus 1 equals 0, or cos x plus 1 equals 0. And you find answers for each of those separately. 2 cos x plus 1 equals 0. If you work your way down here, you get cos x equals negative 1 half, right? And on this side, if you isolate, you get cos x equals negative 1. These values are both things that you, you don't need to use the calculator for. I would use the, the fact that you know some exact values, either from the triangles or just by knowing the graph. Your best bet for this first one, one half, can you, is there a triangle that has that in it? There is, right? One and two here. What angle goes with that? What angle is this? It's actually the bigger, it's the bigger one if it's cosine, right? If it's cosine, it's the bigger one, so this is going to be the, the reference angle. The reference angle which you're getting from the triangle, not from the calculator, is 5 over 3, right? If you, if, you, if you have something other than a half, you're going to get the reference angle from the calculator. Here you're getting it from the triangle. Once you know that, you can just think about where are you looking here. Cosine is, you're noting that this is negative, right? Cos negative, where is cos negative? Over there and over there, right? You're looking for that angle and that angle. Two angles. Quadrant two and three, right? Because you're looking where it's negative, so then you just have to imagine what those two are using that value there. You could just write them if you want. The first one is going to be two-thirds pi. Right, because if that reference angle is pi over three, the other one's two pi over three, or in quadrant three, four pi over three. If you want to know what those are, this is pi minus pi over three. This is pi plus pi over three. Right, in each of those quadrants. That's your solution that that goes here. Right, this is the solution between zero and two pi. There's only well, that's part of the solution. I need to do this other half too, right? I've got these two angles first of all, and I'm going to add to it. The other, the other possible solutions come from this factor. What, is there a triangle we can get with a cosine of 1? Like there's a triangle that, where you can get a ratio of 1, but it's the tangent ratio, right? So you're not going to use the triangles, but you still can use exact values here. Numbers like 1 or negative 1 or 0. These numbers for sine and cosine, I would use the graphs, or tangent for that matter. Okay, use the graphs if you have sine or cosine that are these. Sine or cosine, 0, 1, or negative 1, use the graphs. Think about the graph of cosine. 
to help yourself remember. Where is it in negative 1? Yeah, right here, right? So this value right here, pi. So that's there's only one answer for this. It doesn't have to be where there's where there's more than one answer. You often think each factor is going to give you two, but sometimes there's only one answer. So there's these three answers here, right? You have pi, you have this, and you have this. If you really want to, you can put them in in order, numerical order. Two pi over three, pi, four pi over three. Those are the three answers. If you want the general solution, since they are these three places right here, 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 and here, there's not really any symmetry you can use to give those answers. You could, um, I don't know, you could come with some kind of crazy expression to, to put this one and this one together, but it's probably simplest for this one if there's no obvious symmetry to just say 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n pi plus 2 pi n. This one you could actually write a different way if you want, but you could kind of factor that. Oops, not equal. Or 4 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. That's the solution over all the real numbers where there's no restriction. The new thing in this tutorial, though, is the beginning part here, right? Factoring, looking at each factor separately. There's two other ones to do here. I'll get you started on them, but I won't actually go all the way to finding all the angles. I'll leave that for you to do in the interest of time here. Remember, quadratic formula or factor. I don't really care if you can factor or not. You can you can write the factors if if that's what you want to do. I mean, that's probably the simplest, quickest way if you know how to factor. If you feel like you're challenged at factoring and not that good at it, you can always use the quadratic formula, right? I think this one's going to be... It is this. Um, it's on the formula sheet you have on tests, actually. Or if you if you have a calculator, you can use this quadratic formula program if you want. You can get one. You can get a whole bunch of different ones all over the place if you want. Um, you can just put in two, negative five, and negative three, and it gives you the two solutions. Okay. Well, that this because on this is a virtual calculator. I can't actually link to it. I mean, yours you can just plug it into another calculator and transfer programs. So with my calculus class, I said, well, here, let's just sit down and write it. It's not that hard because they were saying, oh, it's really hard to get pro. It's not hard to write a simple program. It's basically, it's basically putting this in, and then I just while they were programming theirs, I made mine say that so that my program would be better than theirs. How do you do that? I don't know. No, that's with my calculus class. You were even there. You don't even remember that? Sign X. Anyways, whatever you're doing, if you're factoring it or if you're using the quadratic formula, put a method down. You don't have to put a million steps if you're using the quadratic formula. It's probably fine if you just write the quadratic formula and say A equals 2. B equals negative 5, C equals negative 3, and then put the answers. You don't have to put a bunch of steps. I'm fine if you use a, a calculator program for that. But if you are, don't write, I used my calculator. Put the formula down and put the values down. Either way here, I think we uh, end up with this. We end up with sine x equals negative a half or sine x equals 3, right? Realize that if you're using the calculator program, it's going to give you the solutions, not the factors, right? 3 and negative 5. They're not the numbers that go in here. They're the actual values here. And realize that it's sine x, not x. This one's probably the simplest one to answer here. Sine x is 3. What can you conclude about that right away? What x values are going to give you a sine ratio that's 3? You're thinking of those triangles with the three in it? You want to show you the graph? Here's the graph of sine. Where is three? Three is way up there. This part of it has no solutions, right? There's no there's no values that give you a sine ratio of three. 
The other one I'll let you do. You you can use exact values for this one. You finish it off. The hint I'm going to give you on the last one here. This is not something you can do by um, using quadratic formula. There's two different functions. The only way you can do those algebraically is if you can somehow factor them. I will say factor out a common factor, GCF. And think about it. You can factor out the sine here. Sine x, and you write down what's left, and then you look at this, or you look at that. 